Hello friend, this is Dr. Pankaj Kumar, your mentor for today's sessions. And in this session, we will be talking about pollinations, the different types of pollinations, what are the contrivances for the self-pollination, the cross-pollination, and of course, that what are the different agencies through which pollination is effected, right? First of all, have a definition of the pollination. We know very well that whenever there is going to transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma, we call them, it is the pollination, right? Now, there are different types of pollination, what we call self-pollination or autogamy and cross-pollination or allogamy. Even the cross-pollination can be divided into two parts, what we call genogamy and xenogamy. So, let's try to understand. So, in case of autogamy, what will happen? That uh, there is a self-pollination, that means within the same plant, there is going to have a male and female. So, uh, the anther from the same plant is actually being transferred to the stigma of the same plant, right? But in case of cross-pollination, what happens? The two types, as I told you, is recognized. In case of genogamy, what happens? Pollination is going to occur between two different flowers of the same plant. Right? So, genetically, it is a self-pollination because the flowers is in the same plant. So, that's why genetically, it is a, it is a uh, self-pollination. But what happens? Ecologically, it is a cross-pollination. Because why? Because the pollen from one flower is actually being transferred to the another flower. So that's why we, we say that ecologically it is a cross-pollination. And as far as the xenogamy is concerned, that is a typically cross-pollination, where what happens that uh, the anther from one flower of one plant is actually being transferred to another flower of another plant. So that is a typical case of the cross-pollination. We know very well that in case of self-pollination, what will happen? That will lead to the very generation of the uh, homozygous conditions, homozygous conditions, right? And the variation is not going to produce in case of self-pollination, but in case of cross-pollination, it will lead to variations. Now, first of all, let's talk about that what are the uh, contraviances which eventually helps in the very process of cross-pollination. The first is dicliny or unisexuality. So, you see, there are certain plants in which only unisexual flowers are present. So, the possibility of self-pollination is definitely not there. Take an example of papaya. In case of papaya, what happens? That there is a male plant different and the female plants different. So, the only possibility in, in them is the cross-pollination, right? This is what we call dicliny or unisexuality. Now, let's talk about dichogamy. Now, what is dichogamy? Where what happens that the maturity of the male and female organs is going to occur at two different times, okay? For instance, suppose uh, the gynecium is going to develop first before the and Russian. Okay, so naturally that plant has ensured that only cross pollination is going to happen because by the time the female is matured, the male is not matured, so that's why self pollination is not possible. And that is observed in case of magnolia, and the event is actually called as a protogyne. But similarly, suppose if the male is going to mature first, right, then that condition is actually called as a protandry, and the typical example of protandry is a lady's finger, right. Now let's talk about another contravances in, in terms of heterostyle and you can see in the diagram. So what happens here, the style length is a different form in the different plants. Okay, that means uh, uh, there are two different species we can say of the same uh, or two different variety within the same species and one is going to have a longer uh, style and another is going to have a smaller style. Okay. So, this particular system also ensures the very cross pollinations. Okay. The typical example is Primula vulgaris, where we see the different type of style within the plants. Now, there is a one other, another thing what we call self sterility or incompatibility. Now, let's try to understand what happens. You see, whenever any pollen grains is going to fall on any stigma, so, suppose it is of two different species, naturally it will not pollinate. Why? Because there, the protein-protein interaction is going to occur between stigma and the pollen. So, the rejection is going to happen. But there are certain cases in which what happens, that uh, the pollen grain of the same species, if it is going to fall on the stigma, even then it is not going to allow, right? And there are two types of uh, incompatibility, what we know, what we call sporophytic uh, uh, incompatibility and gametophytic incompatibility. Okay, we will discuss in the very chapter of incompatibility. But the very purpose of incompatibility is to ensure a cross pollination, right? 
Now let's talk about the hercogamy. What is hercogamy? So suppose there is some sort of physical barrier between the male and female structure. Okay, if there is a physical barrier, naturally cell pollination is not going to happen. So whenever there is a physical barrier, we call them hercogamy. And the typical example what we see in case of ascalpidiacy, right? And uh, uh, in case of ascalpidiacy, what happens? There is a uh, compound pollen grains. Okay, so that compound pollen grains, what happens? Pollinia structure is there. So that pollinia structure is taken by the insects and it is transferred to the another plant. But the same pollinia is actually not being capable of fertilizing uh, the female structure of the uh, same flower. So this is what we call hercogamy, right? Now let's talk about the contrivances for the cell pollination. The typical is homogamy. Now what does the homogamy means? That the maturity of the sex organs is going to occur at the same time. If the male and female structure is going to mature at the same time, naturally it will go for the cell pollination. There is one more what we call clustrogamy. Now what is clustrogamy? In case of clustrogamy what happens? That flowers never open. If the flowers are not going to open, what will happen? That male and female structure is inside that flowers. So naturally the only possibility is the cell pollination. You can see this example. So this example is, is a comelina, right? That is a groundnut. So you can see there that here the groundnut is there and this is the closed flower. So there what we see only possibility is the cell pollination, right? There is one more what we call bird pollination and that is typically found in uh, Pisum sativum, that is pea plant. So what happens when it is in a bird situation, right? Then only the fertilization is going to happen. So naturally, the moment flowers open, by time by that time, the everything has been the uh, fertilization has already been happening. So that's why this particular system also ensures the very process of cell pollination, right? And this was the unique event that's actually helped Mendel in doing the entire experiment. I am sure you remember in the case of genetics, right? So these are the contrivances which actually helps in the very process of either going for the cell pollination or cross pollination. Okay. Now let's talk about few the mechanism of the cell pollination in that category first of all we will discuss about the turnpipe mechanism okay so this particular mechanism is observed in case of salvia now have a look at this diagram now here what happens the anther is going to have some sort of leaf like a structure you can see there right and it is going to act as a lever so what happens when the insect is going to sit over there, as you can see there, then this entire thing bends. When it bends, then the pollen grains are shed on the back of the insects. Okay, as you can see over there. When such insects visit another flower, for instance, suppose it is visiting over here, then once again it is going to act as a lever mechanism and this time the style that is present over there, the style over bends and in the process of bending what happens, they pick up the uh, pollen grains that it has uh, brought from the other flower. So thereby it affects the cross pollination. So you need to remember that in, in the uh, exams and it is asked that is what is the turnpipe mechanism and which flower it actually is being followed. So turnpipe mechanism is known for the salvia, right? Now let's talk about one other mechanism what we call translator mechanism. Now, what is translator mechanism? Let's try to understand. Here, that is going to occur through the calotropis. Now, we know very well that in calotropis or ascalpidiaci, there is going to have a compound pollen grains, right? You can see in the diagram. So, this is a compound pollen grains, okay? So, what happens when the insect sits on such flower, right? Then its legs actually get entangled with this structure, what we call translator, okay? So since it is a structured, since it is a entangled, so when the insects leave the flower, then this entire compound pollenium is actually, or compound pollen grains is actually pulled from the flower, right? And when it sits on the another flower, then it is, it is actually burst and as a result, the pollen grains are released and the, that is going to affect the very process of the pollinations. So why we are calling translator due to this particular structure. So this is actually called as a translator mechanism. Okay. Now let's talk about one more mechanism, what we call pitfall mechanism. And that is going to occur in case of one plant called Aristolochia. Right. 
have a look at this diagram you see there is a inward bending hair like a structure okay so when insects come over here so they keep falling on them but the structure is like that it will not allow the escape of the insects so insect is trapped over here it will keep on moving and in the process the male and female structure is over there the pollination is going to happen so what is the fate of the that insects what happens after some time these hairs get wither away and the insects escape but by the time it has already affected the very process of pollination so this is what we call pitfall mechanism right now let's talk about another mechanism what we call piston mechanism and that is going to happen in case of a pea right you know pea is known for the very presence of the specific corolla right for instance you see there they they have a larger amount of uh, a petal this actually petal is actually called as a vexillium okay and the smaller one what we call carina right and the keel is there so what happens the vexillium is the uh, landing stage for the insects so the moment the insects land on them then the in, due to the weight the entire thing is actually up and bends upon okay so when it bends upon then what happens that pollen being pollen grains are being dusted on its body okay and as a result of dusting uh, when it visit uh, another flower then definitely it is going to transfer the uh, the po the uh, pollen grains from one plant to another so this is what we call piston mechanism why we are calling piston because the weight of the flower, weight of the bee or insects is going to act as a piston so thereby the another uh, is uh, uh, the entire structure is bending upon them and thereby affecting the transfer of anther now let's talk about that how the pollination is going to occur in case of valesneria valesneria is a submerged hydrophyte right so what happens for pollination uh, the female flower come to the surface so is the male flower so male flower actually get detached okay and the female flower is going to form a cup like a structure so what happens this male flower will travel towards the female flower and when the pollination is going to happen then again this will form a coiled structure and it will come down again uh, under the surface so this is how the pollination is going to occur in case of valesneria mind it here pollination is going to occur over the surface of the water not inside the water though the plant is fully submerged so that is the unique thing that is associated with the valesneria right so these are some of the mechanism what we have discussed now let's talk about some of the agency through which the cross pollination is actually being carried out okay so for instance we say entomophily if the pollination is going to occur by insects we call them entomophily right for instance uh, orchids are pollinated by wasp ficus is pollinated by another very specific type of insects what we call blastophagus yucca is pollinated by pronuba so these are some of the names what you have to keep in your mind from neat perspective right then anemophily that is pollination is going to occur by wind hydrophily when the pollination is going to occur through the water okay so uh, pollination may be occur inside the water then we call it is a, a hypohydrophily right as in joestera and ceratophyllum that pollination is going to occur inside the water but in case of valesneria just we have seen right this is what we call epihydrophily why because the pollination is going to occur over the surface of the water okay so please remember the two uh, plants both are submerged for instance if you take ceratophyllum right they are fully submerged but here the pollination is going to occur inside the water but in case of valesneria though it is also fully submerged but the pollination is going to occur at the surface of the water right then there are few examples few names right and in, in exams it is often asked with a reference to that uh, what is the uh, uh, the name of the uh, agent through which the pollination is being actually affected for instance if you talk about a uh, chiropetrophily that is pollination by bats similarly melitophily when the pollination is going to occur by butterfly we use the word melitophily ornithophily when the pollination is going to occur by birds then we call it ornithophily ophidophily that is if the pollination is going to occur by snakes then we use the word ophidophily so the list is long i have just uh, given a few names but depending upon the uh, 
the agency which is carrying out or affecting the pollination these different types has been recognized okay so that's all as far as this entire sections of pollination is concerned i hope the concept is well understood at your end don't forget to like and subscribe this channel right thank you